We are on Toa and the Tuamotos in the southeast corner of the atoll. It's time to drop our mooring and head to our local friends just a bit further north within the atoll. So we've left the South Anchorage in Toal and it's well it's New Year's Eve today and we are heading up to our friends Luis a little bit further north in the, within the atoll and we've also got a couple of other boats going there with us at the moment. It's a seven and a half nautical mile sail from the south to where our friends live. The Navionics chart for this area is not very good so you need to be very cautious. With the anchor down we go ashore to say hello. <laughs> Crab. Well, the boys have been out here fishing with one of the local guys here, which is um, Louis, his uh, son in law to be, possibly. And they've been on this outer reef area here with a Hawaiian sling, no elastic, basically just a spear. And they've been throwing that at um, fish in the, in the shallows here, and it looks like they've actually managed to catch a parrotfish. And success! Guys, that's a big one, hey? Yeah, it's a big Look one. at that. <laughs> with a gun, with a weapon. Cool. Oh, now my gloves are a big it. one. That's great. Well, it's a very nice parrotfish. The parrotfish has a beak which is used to scrape algae and the soft part of coral from the coral reefs. The beak is strong enough to leave noticeable scars in the coral. The fish grind their food and bits of coral with plate-like teeth in their throats. Boys are here on the outer reef now, looking for their second fish. And they're basically herding the fish. So they've got one on each side here and they're trying to get the fish towards each other. Looks like they might have gone though. With no further luck, they pack up and go and see what Massimo is up to. So we've got our food scraps here for the past week or so, maybe mm -hmm. week, yeah. And we're going to give it to one of the pigs here, or two of the pigs maybe. Share it between Mr. Hiti and this one over here who's already wagging its tail. Look at the size of that crab in its cage. That is huge. We stay just for one night before we head off to the north of Tuao, which is a false pass, 29 nautical miles away. We hope to sail all the way there. So we just need the weather to hold. It means another pass exit, but we know this pass well and know to stay out of the current and have a very easy exit. Once through the pass and into safe water, we head a bit further away from the atoll before we turn to port and make our way to the top end. So, successful pass exit, thankfully. And I'll just show you what it looks like. It's not too bad out here today. There's another monohull out there. He's also just exited. Chose to go out the other side of the pass. Um, we've always been told to go out this side of the pass, so we just stuck to what we've been told by people that sail here a lot. Here's to a good day sailing. We're going to end up in the north of um, Toao, which is the plan for the moment. Um, it's a false pass, so you don't actually enter into the atoll. We sit in a little bay, if you like, amongst the coral. And the mooring ball is there, so we'll go and pick up a mooring ball. Um, we know that they've been recently installed, so they should be safe. And we'll spend a couple of days there, and then the wind is due to come more from the north and pick up. So at that point we'll head down back to Fakarava probably or to another atoll. So we exited the pass behind me about two hours ago. Um, the wind was okay, it was blowing about 10 knots and we were doing about four and a half, five knots at the time and then it just died totally. And I think you can see behind us this big dark cloud just forming an arc in front of us. Um, so obviously a front of, of sorts. Now that's finally come over us and we got some decent wind. We got 15 to 17 knots. Um, it's moved more around to the front of the boat and we've got a uh, full main engine over out. At the moment we're doing six and a half knots and we're having a great sail. So um, this has been a great help. I was worried that we we're going to have to put the engine on at one point as it got very, very light. Um, but perfect conditions now for sailing. We're tearing along the outer side of Toa Atoll over here. 
and we're going to head right up to the northern point in the distance over there. The other monohull that was sailing with us earlier, while well, he was motoring actually, he's far ahead. Um, hasn't put his sails out, he's just been motoring, not sure why. And um, yeah, well behind us you can see that big dark cloud forming a perfect line, stretching up behind us there with a lot of rain coming out on the back end. Um, and that's all brought the wind for us now, and hopefully it will stay until we get to the north. So, um, Yes, to a good bit of sailing. Birds often circle the boat to catch flying fish that are disturbed by Mokara's motion through the water. Wind's died down a bit now, back down to six, seven knots of wind, doing three and a half knots of boat speed. So steady progress, but at least we're sailing. Okay, we're just approaching Ansam Yacht over here, which is in the north end of Tawa Atoll. So it looks like quite a nice entrance, but um, there's a small swell running. The wind has died almost entirely, got about five knots going at the moment. And it's a marked little channel, um, you probably won't see it on the GoPro, just over there. And we can see a yacht mast tucked in behind this little headland over there. So there is another sailor in there. Um, so it looks well protected from here. And in the next two or three days we're supposed to have absolutely no wind. Um, it says it's going to gust up to seven or eight knots, so I think we should be fine in there. Even though it's a sort of a northeast or a northwest. And we can always leave from here. And um, we can head back to um, Fakarava North Pass if it gets uncomfortable here and we need to find shelter. So we're looking forward to exploring this little cove and we've heard a lot about it. And um, we've got some eggs to drop off at one of the locals here. So I'm sure he, he will be pleased to receive those. You see that looks like a wreck on the beach still. So at the moment to come into this pass we're using Navionics and we're also using CIQ for some aerial satellite imagery so we can check the entrance um, because it looks quite um, easy to come in but actually if you look at the port channel marker there's breaking waves off to the right of that so you can't just go in close to the port side you've actually got to go around a little reef over here um, so if you were to enter this at night it could potentially be quite a dangerous entry if you aren't using any satellite imagery so CRQ is a great thing for this um, it'll show you exactly where you are and I'll try and put that in the video as well if I remember to do a quick screen recording. As we approach the pass, everything looks okay on Navionics. We also sometimes use an app called CRQ. CRQ shows your position on a satellite image of your choice. The images come in a form called CAP files, which you can create yourself or download them for an area that you're sailing in. This looks beautiful, guys. I think we're going to be quite happy here for a few days. Didn't really come around this point. So I was saying to mommy, if you came in here at night and you just kept that port channel marker on your port side, you could end up on this reef here. Gonna pick up a mooring north of Tao, Tao, Tao however you say it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it is super clear. And hopefully, for me, me and Dylan, and mum and dad if they want to go snorkeling we can take that mooring ball closest to this the reef here and then we can just jump off the back of the boat and snorkel straight from there Too much choice it's like parking in a car park and if there's too many available for me i can spend half an hour driving around trying to pick the best one and then end up with nothing oh this does look amazing no that's good another <laughs> fish gets oh. away lucky okay wait 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 
Secure on the mooring, we all get in the dinghy and head ashore through the crystal clear water. We're welcomed by the dogs, and so far we can't see any people. So we've got an egg delivery to do, um, we've got some eggs from Luis further down south on Toa and we're going to drop them off here with Gaston. They have some amazing buildings here, simple but interesting and in a perfect setting. The dogs seem to love it and enjoy running into the water chasing fish. Still no sign of Valerie and Gaston, so we keep looking. The ultimate outdoor sink, this will be hard to beat. I suspect this is primarily used for preparing fish. Whilst we keep searching, a boat arrives, which turned out to be Valerie and Gaston's friends. We hand them the eggs and watch them spear fish close to shore. It takes them no time at all to have enough food to feed themselves. It looks like that's how you get your hermit crabs out of the shells. And then maybe you eat them? E.T. is going to try and phone home. I mean, how random this little phone box is here in the middle of nowhere, really. And there he goes. Okay, you're going to have to stay with us. You can't escape. You can't phone for help. You're stuck with us. here except for this wreck which looks like it's been here for a few years already I'm guessing either the mooring slap snapped or I don't know rough weather hit the reef looking at where he's lying I'm guessing it's a mooring that's broken years ago looks they have just redone all these moorings so we're happy on our mooring but um, yeah that's the consequence I suppose the boys decide to go snorkeling so get themselves ready. There are quite a few sharks here, so I suspect the spear gun is more for security. There are so many interesting fish below the surface, and we often will find something we haven't seen before. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.